We were very excited because it pretty much confirmed all of our hard work. We have been working on STEM certification for the last five years. And we use the, now it's called the Georgia uh, uh, STEM continuum that the State Department used. And we live by that continuum. We made sure that all of our efforts and our work was preparing our teachers and preparing our students to make sure that we could show evidence of what was on that rubric. So we knew that it was making a difference with our children being engaged and coming in excited and our parents wanting to be more involved. But just having that piece of paper and showing that we were measuring up in terms of that continuum and then having the State Department to come out and say, yes, you've made it to this, this level in terms of meeting what's on that continuum, we were extremely proud. I believe the difference in teaching in a traditional versus a STEM is in a traditional, we're teaching the students the standards um, that they are supposed to know to be successful in school. But when we tie in STEM, it gives them a real world connection to see how they can use those standards that they're learning through their daily life, such as we've been learning about the chicken life cycle, and we also have our school-wide initiative, We Are the World, Conquering Hunger Through Sustainability. And with these chicks, they're learning, okay, how do chickens actually benefit, not just a farm that they see in the country, but in an urban area? And so they're studying the life cycle of a chicken and they're working on a design to build a chicken coop so that they can eventually sell the eggs to our community. So if people are, are don't have money to purchase food, we can give them food or, or give it to the community so they'll have more healthy foods and fast foods. A food desert is where there's, where there's no good foods or less good foods and there's a lot of bad foods. Well, when I get a Happy Meal at McDonald's, all I, I only see two healthy things, apple slices and apple juice with 100% vitamin A and vitamin C. And they give them oranges with them. About eight or nine years ago, when I first came into this uh, school, I noticed that there was not really anything that showed that science was occurring. And a lot of the math was more drill-based, uh, children knowing their multiplication facts and things like that. What I realized is that children were really fearful of science and math. And to be honest with you, I think some of the teachers were. And as we approach Common Core and now Georgia Standards of Excellence, and there's all this talk, and which is real talk, regarding college and career, careers that we know in order for our students to be able to compete with students that are coming from more affluent, affluent schools, more affluent neighborhoods, communities and exposure, that we would have to prepare them, and especially in terms of the STEM areas where the jobs are, and especially the high parent paying jobs. And to even have that culture and that sense of, we love science and technology, and we can make a difference in the world just by our knowledge in those areas. So in the STEM lab, we, are, we were studying the classification of living Bad. things. So we decided to study the only flying mammal, so we decided to study bats. So what we did next, we wanted to attract more bats here in Georgia and our community because we found out that they're not there and they're very helpful to the community. They're like tight spaces, they like to be bunched up. And this is a two chamber bat house. One chamber right here one chamber right here. We just got finished with it today. But as, so, the reason being is that we wanted to attract bats and so we we're gonna put these up at a truly living well garden. Hopefully the bats will come, most likely they will. First we did it freehand in the STEM lab to see how big we wanted it to be and then next we went in the innovation Mission lab and we started to create a real blueprints and we used 3D models to kind of build it to give us an example of what it would look like. This is the innovation lab and it's here primarily as a support and real world applications for the use of technology. So here we got a 10 chamber bathhouse and we did it 
3D in two models, her model and my. So basically you can move it around and stuff. And so you you can't see it 3D basically on this because it's the glasses. This is our aquaponics system. And here we grow um, vegetables. Um, the aquaponics system that we have here um, has several different models. It has a deep water culture, it has the ebb and flow, and it has, we were the first school um, where this country, company, Hatponics, um, installed the columns. And as you see here, we have broccoli growing. Um, here we have bib lettuce growing. Turned around in the back there is our black-eyed Susan lettuce seedlings. We have uh, um, Thai basil here, and we have mint. Uh, this is the same mint that they use to make double mint gum. Um, so our hydroponic system, and in our system, we have um, shabunkin goldfish. And the shabunkin goldfish provide the nourishment for our plants, and our plants provide the nourishment for the fish. So it's, a, it's an ecosystem all unto itself. And our collards are really taking over, so we're gonna have to do a little something else different with them because they're, they're really growing in here. For me here at M. Agnes Jones and our Falcony and staff, we knew that the right thing was preparing our students for college and career meant preparing them in the STEM areas.